Normally, we read the blessings and curses of this week's parsha in the company of our community in shul. This year is very different. We're isolated and at home, though we see the glimmer of hope as lockdown restrictions ease up. And in Israel and other communities around the world, services resume, but conforming to a new normal. The fearsome curses of Parshat B'chokotai and Kitavo, which we read later this year, terrible warnings of impending destruction, are supposed to shock us and change us. Our coronavirus experience has made it clear that when we need to, we can change. Wearing protective face coverings, maintaining social distancing, are changes in what we do, and those will stay with us as we return. The calls to neighbours and the support we have shown to each other the errands run, the shopping shared, books and games redistributed down the street, are changes in who we are. They are, of course, acts, but they're acts of connection and compassion rather than self-preservation and isolation. We wonder if we'll become a kinder society in the new normal, if we set our minds to it and emphasize the virtues and not just the gestures, then we will. In the Haftarah from Jeremiah, God warns, Cursed is the man who trusts in people and makes mortals his strength, and turns away from Hashem. We need to aspire to a spiritual existence and recognize that our support and salvation comes from God. The idea that we make man our strength is also a metaphor. We make man our strength when we build our security on the backs of others, when we ride on the labor and travails of those who should be our partners. This is the very context of the Tochacha. It comes just after the laws of the Shemitah and Yovel, the sabbatical and the jubilee years, when we allow land to lie fallow and where we redeem those who have become so disadvantaged that they've needed to sell themselves into servitude. There is an enforced punctuation mark. This is a moment of change. Chazal went so far as to explain the 70-year exile after the destruction of the First Temple as a direct retribution for failing to observe centuries of Shemitah and Yovel. We'd made ourselves strong on the backs of the land, on stolen labor, and failing to observe the true charitable sharing mandated by the sabbatical cycle. Jeremiah explains the difference between the cursed and the blessed person. The cursed is like a lone tree in the wilderness who will not see when goodness comes, He'll dwell in the arid desert, in a sulfurous and uninhabited land. By contrast, the blessed man is like a tree that is planted by the water, spreading its roots alongside the brooks, evergreen and continuously fruitful. The cursed is self-absorbed and isolated. It lives in a barren environment. It's noteworthy that we're not told whether it flourishes or is withered. Its productivity is inconsequential. The prophet is concerned with the tree's lack of connectivity. The blessed tree is expansive, connecting and constant. Continuously fruitful, the characteristics which served it well yesterday support it today and are guaranteed for the future. The accursed had to make his strength by riding on the backs of others. By contrast, the blessed has trusted in Hashem. He recognizes that what he has is on trust. It is to be used with righteousness and charitably. Hashem demands that our relationships are honest and compassionate. As we've read so recently in Parshat Kadoshim, we must be just and we must be fair. We must look out for each other and not entrap or deceive. These actions are about strengthening community. The discipline in what we do frames and directs the people we should be or strive to become. The fearsome admonitions of the Tochacha challenge us to revise our approaches to our land, our community, and our Lord. We should establish a new and better normal. It begins in our hands, but as Jeremiah reminds us, the hope of Israel is Hashem. If we are godly, we can anticipate salvation. This is our hope and our prayer. His closing words ring true as we look to return from isolation. Rafa'eni Hashem ve'erafe, Hoshieni vivshea, ki tehilati ata. Heal me, O Lord, 
and I shall be healed. Save me, and I shall be saved, for you are my praise. Wishing you and all your families Shabbat Shalom and good health.